Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of What the Throne Are Colliders weekly Game of Thrones podcast. My name's Destin. I'm here with Ashley Victoria Robinson. And we missed you on yesterday's review. You had a, a live event for one of your podcasts that yeah. you were doing yesterday. Yeah, Geek History Lesson Live in Hollywood. It was amazing. Cool. So I'm sorry I couldn't be here, but I'll be here for the last two episodes, um, which are going to be the best two episodes. Yeah. So. <laughs> it looks, it sound, sounds like it. Totally. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we did our review. You can catch that on Collider Videos, uh, the YouTube channel, and and on, on the podcast feeds. And, you know, we do reviews there. And this one, we just kind of concentrate on. And I also want to get your thoughts because we didn't get your thoughts mm-hmm. yesterday on yesterday's episode. So before we get into our, our main topic, which is will Daenerys be betrayed and lose the Iron Throne? Dun, dun, dun. What did you think about last night's episode? It's interesting because between last night's episode and the Battle of Winterfell, um, I think the pacing is wild. It is like all over the place. Um, We really spent a lot of time catching up with characters and kind of seeing them live in their happy places, which is not what I expected to see in this season of Game of Thrones. Some of that was really nice. But I do wish that with storylines like Brienne and Jaime that we could have sat in that for like two episodes instead of... 20 minutes. <laughs> you know, I think it would have earned the emotional response at the end a little bit mm-hmm. more. Um, so we do that, we do that, we do that. Um, they ride all the way to King's Landing, which as far as I know is like six months away because mm-hmm. in season one it takes a good half of the season for Ned to get down there. Mm-hmm. Um and then for the last ten minutes to mostly just be the shots of some of the of Cersei and Daenerys looking at each other, I just thought like overall, I thought mm-hmm. the episode was like very weirdly paced. Mm-hmm. I liked everything that we saw, but I feel like for the third to last episode, more things should have happened. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Maybe the next two episodes will prove me wrong. And mm-hmm. this was a great breather that we really needed after the Battle of Winterfell. But it kind of felt like we slowed our roll after. You know, all of that darkness and all those zombies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, also, you weren't on... You were on the the last review, not yesterday's, but you were on the, the week before yes. that, right? Yeah. But then you weren't here for what the throne after, right? No, I wasn't here for Battle of Winterfell. Oh, Because I was right. uh, overseas. That's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, Would have been nice to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so... What we talked about, we talked about uh, the Battle of Winterfell episode, the Long Night, and everything. And and actually, at least for for myself, I enjoyed this episode more so. Interesting. Than just because one, the whole white slash zombie thing mm-hmm. was never. I've mentioned it many times on this podcast. Not really my thing. Yeah. And you know, I I think it had a great payoff at the end. Some people disagree. Uh, me and Haley went into this whole. Is Arya Stark a Mary Sue thing last mm-hmm. week, uh, which we definitively said she was not. Yeah, definitely not. not yes. <laughs> um, and th- that a lot of people didn't know what that actually meant. Um, yeah, that's one of those weird internet things that's kind of become uh, distorted, yeah. Yeah. shall we say. <laughs> yeah. And uh, But for me, you know, it, that wasn't the reason why I didn't like – not that I didn't like that, but why it didn't achieve, you know, uh, a higher level mm-hmm. for me is, is just – not quite as interesting as all the political maneuvering and everything like that that yeah. happens on the show. And so to me, this ep- this ep- past episode was that. And then this brings us to kind of our topic at hand. The main thing that we got out of this episode is that Daenerys is kind of – see, it, it, on one hand, you can say, okay, she's being paranoid. But uh-huh. then on the other hand, you can see – well, she actually has some certain things to be paranoid <laughs> about, right? Yeah. So she's being paranoid, but at the same time, there's reason to be. And so, you know, one of the main conversations we got out of that was that Tyrion and Varys conversation. What mm-hmm. do you think about that conversation? It's interesting because I've been struggling to come up with what the thesis of last night's – do we know what the title of it is? Um, um, what last night's it episode was is? The Last of the Starks. There you go. When I watched it, it was called Game of Thrones 71. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, last of the Starks. Great. So I've been struggling to come up with what the thesis of The Last of the Starks is because it's pretty easy, even with the Battle of Winterfell, to sort of understand uh, what we're serving narratively. And I think that the thesis of last night's episode was was what uh, revolves around what Varys was saying when he said, um, if eight people know that's not a secret anymore, that's information. Mm-hmm. Um, and his manipulations with 
Tyrion, and it's that kind of activity that got this whole series into the problems that we've enjoyed watching explored over eight seasons. Um, it got them into that place in the first place. I think it's about, yeah, know who to trust and know who's really in your camp. I loved those scenes, mm -hmm. and I love various and Tyrion's relationships, and they're such strong actors that, like, I will watch them talk in front of a fireplace. I, that could have been the whole episode, and I would be like, great, this is fine. Um, two fireplace chat scenes, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that you really like, uh, kind of like we were alluding to earlier, the political machination, mm -hmm. yes. so I'm assuming that was a big hit for you. Yes. Yeah, definitely, especially because we've seen Tyrion's journey, we've mm -hmm. seen Varys' journey. Like, Varys, look, he... He isn't loyal. I mean, I thought the whole episode was about loyalty and who who who's who people are loyal to, whether it's family name mm -hmm. like Starks Targaryen or or the greater good. Uh, in Barris's case, is the realm. Right? Yeah. he is not loyal to a particular. So, him joining Danny's side was because he had felt that Danny was the best ruler. Mm -hmm. Now he's seen. In his, in his mind, that's not the case anymore. And so and he wants to do something about that, where Tyrion is like, okay, yes, she has her faults, mm -hmm. but she's still the best one that we can have. And then Varys is kind of pushing for this Jon Snow angle, especially in lieu of the information that mm -hmm. he, he received from Tyrion via, Tyrion via Sansa, which obviously Sansa planted in Tyrion with, you know, ulterior motives. So two quick thoughts. It's really interesting Ferris kind of coming around to being at sort of anti Danny now because yeah. that's where he was in the first season. Like he was trying to kill her. Mm. So he's kind of come full circle. And we've talked a lot about things that have tied back into the pilot or into the place where we mm. first found these characters. And we've seen these storylines pay off like with Arya. But a lot of people are mad about Sansa and Sansa's betray that's what they're mm -hmm. they're viewing this as a betrayal but Sansa says to John I swear if you tell me okay. and he doesn't tell her Bran tells mm -hmm. her um and I think that's just a really interesting like little loop not that it if you're still mad about it it's not going to justify it yeah. for you but I think that's sort of an interesting little uh, loophole there well, and also <laughs> We've talked about this. Her character, she has learned a lot from two different people, one being Cersei and the other being Littlefinger. Littlefinger. <laughs> and so she doesn't play that honor game mm -hmm. anymore. I mean, not that she ever did, but her character, when she starts off in the series, is doesn't even have the mind to even comprehend yeah. <laughs> these type of <laughs> political maneuverings and, and, you know, what information can be used as a weapon, et cetera, et cetera. But she learns these things from those two characters. And and so now she is plotting her own. Not so – I mean, I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, does she want the Iron Throne? I personally don't think so. I think she just wants the North to be the North. I think she wanted what Rob Stark was going to be, King of the North. Mm -hmm. She thought – Jon Snow is going to be king of the north. I mean, not so much that she needed one of her brothers to rule, but that the Starks yeah. as a family would rule the north, and then she would be part of that. It's interesting, too, to see in the beginning of this episode how Arya is kind of like her muscle. Yeah. Like when Arya intercepts Jon and is like, we need a word with you. It's, and it's also funny because Maisie Williams is like five foot nothing. Like mm -hmm. she's one of the smallest people in the cast. But we've talked a lot about Sansa and how we don't think she wants the Iron Throne. So I do find find it fascinating that that's kind of where a lot of the discussion online has turned, that people think she's going to fully um, betray Danny. And I don't think Sansa has Danny's best interest in mind, but mm -hmm. I don't think she would betray her. And I don't think what she did telling Tyrion is a betrayal, and I don't think it was meant as a betrayal. I think she thinks she's looking out for Jon's best interests, mm -hmm. and then in sort of Varys' train of thought, she's looking out for what's best for the realm, because she has proof that Jon's a great leader. She has no proof that Danny's worth anything except as a wrangler of dragons, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was another part uh, of this episode was Daenerys, her paranoia. They had that one shot of her in Winterfell during... With the Starbucks cup? <laughs> yes, yes, with the Starbucks cup that everybody's <laughs> freaking out over. I mean, um, you know what? That's fine. Starbucks is canon in Winterfell. Yeah. Who cares? Um, <laughs> There's it, a God's Woods instead of the Little Mermaid in the circle. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but she gets paranoid mm -hmm. seeing that, that, you know, Tyrion and Jaime Two people that are part of uh, the, Jamie who killed her father, mm -hmm. you know. And then you see Jon Snow talking to Tormund. Tormund saying, "You should be king. Mm -hmm. You should. You ride the dragons, etc." You know, which is 
Danny's dragons that yeah. she had mothered and and brought into this world. She's the one who, I, I'm you know I'm setting up the the pros of, of, of Daenerys. She did sacrifice you know apparently only half the Death Rock and only half the Unsolid, which I don't know how that happened because right. <laughs> that looked like we'll just say okay we couldn't see it it's fine it's yeah fine. yeah it, it, it looked like it looked like ninety five percent of the yeah, Death Rock yeah, army yeah. it looked like. <laughs> Maybe eighty percent of unsolid, All but those somehow, CG soldiers. yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> but somehow it ended up being just only fifty fifty of each, and she still has has a bunch of those. But um, but she did sacrifice some things for the greater good, right? I mean, she could have taken easily taken that army, taken the dragons, gone down south, mm-hmm. decimated Cersei, yeah. and 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 taken the Iron Throne, you know, quite handily. Uh, but she chose to to do something for the greater good. And she's lost a lot. And that's been part of the prophecies that surround her, that directly deal with her, mm-hmm. as opposed to the ones that could maybe deal with her. Um, it's all about people who will betray you. And it's all about either her death or the death of people she loved. She lost her uh, parents. She lost her brother. She lost her husband. She lost her people. She's lost her dragons. Now she's lost John. Like, she lost Jorah. We, you know, the fact that she is alone there... Maybe for that character, it's an important realization to come to. But for me, it wasn't a particular surprise because mm-hmm. the only person she has now is, well, Grey Worm uh, and John. Yeah, and there and her and John are sort of on the outs now. Yeah, and then the whole thing because there's some sort of controversy with uh, Missandei as well as how her character was killed in the last episode. I didn't have an issue with it mm-hmm. because I felt like when you're talking about Daenerys's character, she's the last closest person mm-hmm. to her. And that's that was the point was to rile her up to be like, okay, there's no more peace anymore. There's no more we're going to have a truce and you surrender mm-hmm. and, and you can live and we just send you away. Mm-hmm. There's no more of that. There's no. Dracarys burned the whole mother down. <laughs> I mean, I'll say this um, as a white person mm-hmm. who acknowledges my privilege and I will, I don't understand what it's like to be a person of color mm-hmm. and to watch fantasy as a person of color who's not usually represented I understand narratively why Missande is mm-hmm. the character who goes out. I do understand. I do understand what that does for Danny. I do understand that since we killed Jorah in the last episode, Missande is her best option. No. We're not going to kill John because Song or of Ice yet. and Fire. Or not yet. Well, right. We're not going to kill him in the fourth episode no. of the season. Um, but I also do understand um, the optics of like killing one of your most prominent characters of color. So I can see the argument. From both sides, and like all things, it's complicated, but I don't think it was meant maliciously. No, and also optic-wise, if, you know, if this show had just started and that's what happened, blah, 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 Mm -hmm. we've seen Ned Stark, a white guy, get his head cut off. We've seen Roderick, white guy, Mm -hmm. get his head cut off. You know what I mean? So we've seen this, we've seen Theon, white guy, get utterly... Poor Theon. Yeah. R.I.P. Uh, uh, yeah, mutilated. My favorite character. <laughs> mutilated. Uh, Haley was crying uh, during that Me that too, scene. yeah. I also watched it uh, at 3 o'clock in the morning, very jet-lagged after I got back from a plane and fully sobbed <laughs> watching that episode. Um, but so so because in the context of the entire series, mm-hmm. I, I don't seem to – I don't have an issue with that. Um, uh now, you, and also I think they, they wanted to do like a, a switch on you with Grey Worm. Mm-hmm. They were like – Graham Worm's going to talk about all the cool things that's going to happen after everything's all I good and done. I just wanted them to be happy. <laughs> oh, you know, you know that with that speech. So we all yeah, thought Graham Worm was going to die in the Battle of Winterfell. Yeah. Instead, it's Masande. And so, yeah, um, Danny's in a in a rough place right now. I mean, Varys basically insinuating that he is going to take her out. He's mm-hmm. going to assassinate her. I don't know how. He's got or, all those little birds. Or win. <laughs> or win. Because... I'm thinking intellectually he would wait until after because he know he at least must know this that she would be a better rule letter than Cersei. Sure. So mm-hmm. he must at least let that play out. Mm-hmm. Have her beat Cersei in the next battle. Then whatever he has planning. It's only if you happen. believe that she can beat Cersei. I mean, I do just because I. Well, because we know how narrative structure works, yes, and, and she's our like, heroine. Yeah, and, and I don't see them go ending the series like. Yeah. Cersei's the queen and, and everything. Like, yeah. <laughs> that would be so yeah. funny. Cersei's still the queen and she's like, nah, burn it all to the ground. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, there's no way Cersei's living no. past, you know, the, the end of the series. No way. Um, and then, 
you know, we have Jamie going down there as well. But do you think Varys, one, is going to attempt the assassination during the battle, after the battle? And is he going to be successful? It's interesting because I don't know if Varys is going to go the assassination okay. route. Because Just to spread the word of Jon Snow? Yeah. He tried that once before, um, basically in the form of Jorah Mormont. Yeah. Um, and sort of the wine merchant and everyone who was revolving around that in season one and two didn't really work. Um, but I definitely think we might see like the propaganda machine of Westeros and mm-hmm. what that looks like. Um, he's very famous for the phrase little birds, you know. Ravens are the quickest way mm-hmm. to disseminate the news. Um, I think if Jon Snow rolls up with this incredible force at his back and if he's been picking up people along the way, it's going to be really easy for various or sort of his instruments to look at that and say, well, there's your real leader. Oh, by the way, this is Aegon Targaryen, the sixth of his name. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's – I don't know if he's going to try to kill – Danny. Okay, but then on the flip side of that, if he does do that mm-hmm. and w- Daenerys catches the wind, he's a goner. You know what I mean? Only if she can get to it. I mean, he survived a lot. He has, but he, in effect, talking to Tyrion about mm-hmm. this, Tyrion seems to want to stay loyal to Daenerys. Yes. Do you the, think Tyrion's going to keep his confidence? That's the thing. Ooh. Dear, Tyrion can Ooh. easily tell <laughs> Daenerys and, you mm-hmm. know, he kind of owes Varys, though, because when he was in jail and Cersei yes. tried him, like, Varys was very integral in bringing Jamie in there yes. and freeing him. I um, mean, they've always had this, I guess, contentious relationship, but that grudging respect. I don't yeah. know. That's To me, that's more interesting than, like, is Bronn going to shoot Tyrion or Jamie? Because no. Uh, <laughs> I did not like that scene. That was the one scene I didn't care for in the last episode. Uh, I thought it was a well-acted scene. Well-acted, but just <laughs> not... It, like it had no place. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. Quick. It was an in and out, pointless scene. That it felt like, like one of those things where it was like we have to address this, exactly. so we're going to spend five minutes on it, and uh, now we're walking. <laughs> yeah, it almost seemed like they wrote themselves in a corner, and they were like, "Oh, okay. Well, let's just have this little scene here." Because yeah. at the end, let's say Braun had no participation into the this last battle mm-hmm. whatsoever, and he just kind of comes at the end. And he says, "Hey, remember you promised me this." I assume, let's say Tyrion survives. Jamie dies or whatnot, Cersei dies, Daenerys or Jon Snow is is king or queen. Mm-hmm. And he goes, hey, I uh, remember that thing you promised me? Yeah. <laughs> like, I just don't see the point of yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah. why spend any time other than we, we like Braun as a character? Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah. Um, I do think if, if, if Varys is going to try to kill Danny, circling all the way back to that question mm-hmm. from earlier, yeah. I think doing it during whatever the next battle slash skirmish is would be the smartest way to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Because then you'd be like, oh, she died tragically in battle for her people so that she can have sort of a nice legacy, um, but it doesn't look like an assassination attempt, right? Yeah, it's rough, though, because now that we're down to one dragon, she's the only one going to be riding Drogon. I mean, before... I mean, I don't know. Is Jon going to ride Drogon? I think only in the case of Daenerys dying. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he's going to be like, here, I'm the real heir, and pushes off Danny yeah, yeah, and yeah, takes yeah. on Drogon yeah. and flies away. <laughs> but it would be more of a that situation of... so funny. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be more of a situation where he, he has to, or Daenerys is, is gone. Yeah. I don't think Jon Snow himself will... I, I mentioned, I think, on the review, the only way I could see Jon Snow, let's say, killing Daenerys mm-hmm. is in a situation where Daenerys is doing something... Burn them all, burn them yes, all, burn them exactly. all. Exactly. Yeah. Which which some people are not liking that 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 part that, that her descent into madness is is too quick. And I actually agree with that. I, mm-hmm. I think if they go that route, which I still not sure they are. Mm-hmm. I think they may be teasing that she is just to to make the viewer feel uncomfortable and yeah. at, uh, not at ease. Mm-hmm. And that in the end, maybe she either sacrifices herself for John mm-hmm. or does something to win back. The audience. It's interesting if they do go that way with her because then the question becomes, is madness an inevitability with the Targaryens? Uh, You know, because we saw Viserys going that way. We know mm -hmm. her father went that way, which begs the question, will Jon go that way or is Jon's bloodline diverse enough? Like, you know, there's sort of an interesting question about, like, why they're crazy Mm -hmm. and is it because of the inbreeding? I did appreciate that Tyrion and Varys... Um, danced around the marriage idea, which of course we've been talking about yes. here and people have been talking about online. Um, and then um, 
Tyrion was like, no, John's from the north. It's absolutely not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, they hinted that when they got together, they were kissing and yeah. he pushed her away. He's like, oh, I'm not down with this. Where Daenerys is like, uh... I liked that scene because it took me a couple minutes to try to be like, is she manipulating him? Is this genuine? Um, mm-hmm. I thought that was a really well executed scene. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I mean, she was very adamant about yes. what he should do. And, you know, Jon Snow's very much about his his honor. His honor and the truth. And and it, D- Danny's an interesting character for me because I don't always find her likable. Mm-hmm. And I did not find her likable for most of this episode, um, but particularly in that scene. But taking the fantasy of it aside, if you put yourself in that position and you were Danny and you've been driving towards this for so long and you've given up everything that sort of mattered, and then you learn that the one person mm. that you let matter to you is the person who could unsee, you know, I understand why she would feel that way. Yeah. And if John is telling her, like, no, I don't want it, no, I'm lo-, like, you'd be like, okay, then shut up. <laughs> don't say anything. Why would you tell, especially, you know, like Sans and Ari are quite cold to her. Pun yeah. intended? Uh-oh. Cold? <laughs> yeah, when you had mentioned, like, uh, Vera sending the birds, I, I think in the review, I was like, I think Sans is sending out ravens with yeah, all Yeah, I remember like, that. <laughs> sending these all out for everyone to, to hear. Um, but yeah, it, it's Daenerys is how her character ends up. Because, one, they're not going to change Jon Snow. Jon Snow is not going to go mm-hmm. mad or evil or, or whatever. So we know he may die, mm-hmm. um, but which is seeming increasingly likely. <laughs> yes, and, and but Daenerys, on the other hand, we can't tell. Yeah, she's kind of our wild card. Yeah, and it, I think it depends on how many people we want to give a happy ending to, um, and giving Danny a happy ending would fit in like the classical hero's journey narrative structure, and I just don't know if we live in that space with Game of Thrones anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be interesting, I think, if she were left alive. I think it would be very interesting. And I firmly believe that your series finale of your show tells you what the show has been about the whole time. Mm-hmm. A really good season finale. Like you learned like in the in the Breaking Bad season finale, you learned that Walter White was never a good person. Mm-hmm. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> in the justified season finale, you learn that it was always about Raylan and Boyd's relationship and the understanding that they have. Um, and so whatever Game of Thrones does in their finale, and ultimately who winds up on the Iron Throne, which is why we keep circling around mm-hmm. this discussion, it's gonna basically tell us what everyone has been driving toward this whole time. Mm-hmm. And if it's Danny, it'll say a lot of interesting things about a lot of characters mm-hmm. that we've spent a decade plus with now. <laughs> yeah, it definitely. I like that you mentioned Justify. That definitely has I one. Love well, that conversation. The finale is so good. The conversation that they have at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like you know, you could have told me this over the phone. Why'd you come here? Yeah. You know? And uh, it was like, why? Is he your friend? He's like, no, but we dug coal. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, great, uh, great ending to that that series. Very underrated series that most people have not watched. Well, you know what? Here's your homework, <laughs> watchers and listeners. Go well, watch Justified. Well, because it's a modern day western. Yeah, and it like westerns already are you know not as popular as they used to be, mm-hmm. and then now you're talking about modern day western. Yeah, even but it's so good. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. If you yeah. like Walter Goggins, you'll love it. <laughs> yes, he's amazing. Great in the Shield. Um, Oh, yeah. that's pre-justified too. What For the shield? That's pre-justified, yes, pre-justified, and he's got no southern accent in it either. No, no, but still <laughs> great acting. I mean, he's a character that you like. You hate him, but mm-hmm. you love him at the same time. That's kind of his bread and butter. Yes, he he lives it. He lives in that world. This uh, has been justified, quarter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it's it, Daenerys living or dying. So you, where where are you you putting her odds of surviving? Betrayal, because I think Varys is going to betray her one way or other, mm-hmm. assassination or, like you said, with propaganda and getting the people to go with uh, Jon Snow. Yeah, I think a hundred percent there's going to be some sort of betrayal from Varys. Mm-hmm. Um, how effective that is hinges on what Tyrion decides. And one of the greatest things about Tyrion as a character and Peter Dinklage as an actor is it's tough to get a read on him. And it's often tough to understand exactly what he's going to do until you see it happen. 
and then it makes complete sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and that makes for dynamic storytelling, a dynamic television. I think I said when we initially gave our odds on everyone that I was like, 90% Danny's going to die. Mm-hmm. But as the season's gone along, I think I would be less shocked now than I would have before the series premiered um, if she lived. Mm-hmm. But I still think it's like 70-30 she's probably going to die. Mm-hmm. It won't be till the finale. It won't be for two more episodes yet. Okay. For two weeks. <laughs> it's interesting because assuming that the, the next episode, the end of the battle happens, mm-hmm. if she were to die in the last episode, that means it would be at the hands of somebody else. Do Someone you know I mean? personal. I would want it to be... Something personal? I would. I wouldn't want her to be taken out by an assassin or like crushed by a boulder or, you know, with with characters like that, I want it to mean something. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite character, the young Greyjoy, died, and it meant something. Yes, not not who he fought really didn't but matter. How why it happened and why he yeah. did it. Yeah, uh, the whole reason for him being there had nothing to do really with the Night King yeah. or the White Walkers. But I would want that for Danny, even mm. if even if she's not my favorite character, and even if I find her difficult to empathize with from time to time. I think I think a character of that magnitude, who is Sean mm. over this series, like deserves. If she's going to go out, mm-hmm. it's got to be right. It's got to be uh, epic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that means a lot of epic deaths. Because if you're talking about Cersei dying, possibly Jamie probably dying, Jamie. <laughs> um, either Jon Snow or Daenerys, mm-hmm, if not both. Yeah, that would be interesting if they killed. You still think it's going to be one or the other? Yeah, I think so. I I don't know. I think one is going to sacrifice for the other. Could you imagine if they were both left alive? (laughs) Then I wouldn't know what show I'm watching, to be honest. I'd be like... (laughs) They're like, everyone gets a happy ending. Yeah, I'd be like... uh, They get married and have children. And we're like, what? Arya goes back to Gendry. What? (laughs) Yeah, no. I I did like that because that... You know, the callback to to her conversation with her father Mm -hmm. in season one, because that's who she's been the whole time. She's not a lady. She's not someone that's going to sit in a castle Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, worry about, you know, all the like minutia of daily operations Mm -hmm. of of a king, not so much a kingdom, but an area like the north. Fiefdom. Yeah. Well, from the moment that scene started, I was like, she's going to say no. (laughs) Yeah. And it breaks my heart. But that's true to the character. Yeah. So ultimately, it's satisfying. But yeah. poor Gendry. But Lord of Storm's End, he made out pretty well. He did. <laughs> Being the last surviving Baratheon. <laughs> he did. Uh, it's just, you know, and then Arya and the Hound are heading down south. I loved that People, sequence, too. Okay, so this is something we brought up, uh, I think, in the review. Because we didn't have really an issue with Arya killing the Night King because I know everyone was like, oh, it's got to be Jon Snow. It's got to be Jon Snow. I, I think no, I would have... I think Arya's I would've... been training her whole arc for this. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't have minded, like uh, I think I said in, in that episode, I wouldn't have minded a, a battle between Jon Snow mm-hmm. and the Night King and then Arya popping in and, and, and killing the yeah. Night King. I think I would have been fine with that. Um, but I think it might be too much for her to go down and kill Cersei. She's already killed the Night King, like... I think as a character, one, yes, I know she hates her or, or whatnot, but she doesn't really have that connection to Cersei. Not the way even Sansa has more of a yes. connection. I know there's a popular theory that she's going to put on Jamie's face. Uh-huh. Um, I hope that's not the case. I hope if it is, if she, if Cersei dies at the hands of Jamie, I hope it's actually Jamie, yeah. um, because that just means better narrative closure. Um, I do think that's Arya's goal. Yes, but I hope that that is not the case. But I did like, I like the sequence where Arya killed the Night King because it's all of these people who are protecting Bran, who was the little boy that they couldn't protect in the beginning. So I just thought that was kind of meaningful. Yeah. Um, so anything else with the, this episode? That doesn't necessarily have to directly relate to Daenerys and her betrayal. I think she may get on the Iron Throne and then die. <laughs> yeah, like she'll actually get to sit there and like yeah. have a scene and then yeah, and, and, and then die. Like she's already mortally wounded. But she gets to goal. She gets to accomplish the thing yeah. that she... Cer- uh, Cer- I can Cer- live with that. Cersei's already dead. Yeah, They've yeah. won the battle. Yeah. But she's mortally wounded. She like crawls up there yeah. onto the Iron <laughs> Throne, sits on it, and then dies. Oh, that'd be <laughs> cool. I could get behind that. But that would get... Re- th- then the whole pregnant thing would never... Ha- the whole like baby thing. I don't know if my baby theory um, is going to hold true anymore because 
We only got two episodes left. Yes. Um, if that were, you know, it doesn't mean that it couldn't happen, but if that were the case, I feel like it's something that we should have addressed by now. Mm-hmm. So perhaps that's not the case. Um, and maybe I was wrong, and that's fine. I really liked seeing Brienne being happy, and I don't even necessarily mean her and Jamie and their consummation of their mm-hmm. relationship, but like when they were all drinking together and she was like smiling yes. and laughing um, because we haven't really seen her smile with her teeth. Like we've never seen a huge smile from her yeah. and to see her experience that joy was so wonderful. Um, but I wish we could have lived in that a little longer. Yeah. Yeah. We mentioned on the, on the review that uh, not, we, it wasn't like the brawn scene where it was like that. I just didn't like that. Mm-hmm. It was just, don't know if we needed that. Yeah, with I, the yeah, consummation. Yeah. So I also, um, while I liked it, I was like, I don't know if I like that. Like, I sort of like what it does narratively, but if 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 it were me, mm-hmm. I would never have had them get together. They never indicated that Jamie ever had. They indicated that Brienne did, mm-hmm. but they never indicated that Jamie ever had that type of feeling. They had her, like yeah. the, the love of respect and honor and fellowship. Yes. And- well, they're interesting, right? Because if you look at it sort of from a Jamie narrative perspective, like Cersei is like all physical beauty, all fire, all passion, yeah. and Brienne is all inner beauty. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can understand why you would want to pit them against each other romantically. Um, but I also think because of Jamie's speech to Brienne at the end where he's like, I'm not a good person, like I did this for Cersei. I, I think we should have lived in the bliss of that for a little longer so that when the hammer stroke finally fell, like we understood why it hurt Brienne as much as it did. Mm-hmm. Um, and look, I, I don't, pacing is hard. Well, that's the thing is when you only <laughs> have six you know. episodes, they are rushing <laughs> you know, everything. And, and ultimately like, yeah, we could talk about pacing. We'd be like, this happened really quick and this happened really slow, but like there's so much good stuff going on yeah. um, that we're just nitpicking yeah. because we can. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, uh, so that's it for this episode. Uh, Ashley, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley V. Robinson. Check out uh, the Collider Video Space, the Collider website, because a bunch of my coverage of Tolkien is going to go up there. And check out my podcast, Geek History Lesson, at geekhistorylesson.com. Yeah, that's where you went uh, when you you weren't here for the Battle of Winter. How to do that sweet live show Mm. and the Tolkien junket. (laughs) Hope you had a good time in London. I had the best time. (laughs) (laughs) And you guys can find me on Twitter at Think or Instagram Dennis.tzng. You can uh, tweet us your thoughts on this past episode or this episode of this podcast. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Collider Videos. Also subscribe to our po- uh, Collider podcast feeds, both the Collider TV Talk and the Collider Factory feed. And we'll see you guys next time.